Hey guys, welcome back to Mobile Dwellings. Today is a new day, so let's do something on the bus. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to install this wool insulation, and at the end, I'm gonna give you a bit of a dissertation, not that word at all, on insulation options and the pros and cons and why we went with this wool insulation over the others. So right here, we have a huge pile of Havelock wool insulation. They make a two inch bat for RVs and vans, and this is what we went with. So we are of course learning how to do this in this very moment. But step number one is to fill all the voids and nooks and crannies with sheep's wool that you're not going to be able to access later. All right, so our process for filling these cavities is we take one bat, we line it up with our void space, give it a little snip at the edge, which makes it really easy to tear. But this is a little bit thick to get your hand all the way at the bottom. So we are taking this piece of Unistrut, pushing this bat till it's all the way down at the bottom. And then with the bat all the way at the bottom, we are pulling it back up. All right, so we've got this whole lower cavity all done. We kind of jumped the gun here a little bit though because I've got to take off some of these in order to shove insulation behind them. But we basically have two full layers down here and it is feeling and looking super cozy. Oh my. Hey daddy, touch it. It's really soft. Can you make this fluffy please? Mm -hmm. We found Nova in the job. This is gonna be done in no time. You guys are so fast and helpful. All right, so with all these excellent helpers, we have at least half of the wall done. Can I be in the shop or what, Daddy? Hey, you can be in the shop. Hello, and thank you. Here is our fluff. So this is how we make a fluff box. And we're in uh, uh, our friend's bus. You know what we're using? Fluff. <laughs> Where does the fluff come from? Sleep. <laughs> all right, well, Nova basically said it all. Thank you for explaining things, Nova. All right, so we had a productive day of bus work. We got both lower walls and around the windows insulated. Right now, we're quickly gonna come up with a game plan for the ceiling, and then we're going to execute it tomorrow. In the morning, I'll let you know what we're doing. Have a good night. Peace. Woo! All right, so we've made a lot of progress on this ceiling, and I wanna show you our process. We're cutting lengths of insulation to fit this void between right here and right here. It's about 33 inches. We're doing another one from there to here that's also about 33 inches. And the last one over here is the same. It's around 33 inches from there to there. As you can see in the center, it stays up really well because of the way our furring strips are set up. Over here, we're gonna have to do a little bit of something to keep this up. Oh, there it is. What? It, here, let me just go ahead and get that from you. Yeah. Mm. Great. All right, so the ceiling's all up and Katie took care of this rear area as well. But I did run out of staples and before I ran out of staples, I stapled my hand. That freaking hurt. But don't worry about it because Nova kissed it and she gave me a rainbow unicorn band-aid. So everything is good. When we're ready to install our ceiling after we've done our wiring and everything, we're going to be running one inch bats. We've got a three quarter inch gap there. And so we are going to diligently insulate this bus until we can't anymore. Okay, so as you think about what insulation to put in your bus and how much to put in there, you probably wanna to refer to this Energy Star Guide. So to sort of summarize what you're looking at in that Energy Star Guide, basically if you are in the south and you're dealing with hot climates for the most part, ceiling insulation is very important and floor insulation is not as important. If you're in the cold northwest or the northeast, floor insulation is very important, ceiling insulation is still very important, and wall cavity insulation kind of stays the same. Now we are never going to be able to achieve the recommended R values in a bus unless you raise the roof and install R pane windows. We simply cannot have R25 in the floor. That would take five inches at R5 
we can't have R30 to R60 in the ceiling. That would take like another five to six inches of ceiling. We are also very much fighting a losing battle if we are not deleting and covering up every single one of these windows and replacing the ones that we need to keep with dual pane RV windows. Even if we achieve those R values, the windows are just letting in so much hot and cold. On top of that, this whole thing is metal, which means all of it is conducting the temperatures very quickly that hits it. If that's cold air, that means cold bus. If that's hot sun, that means hot bus. So since we cannot reach those R values and we're not deleting windows and we're not going to be able to make this bus comfortable in very cold temperatures, we are building a 40 degree to 90 degree Bus. Let's talk about spray foam versus Havelock wool. Havelock wool is R3.6 per inch. That's not good at all when you compare it to spray foam, which is approximately R6.5 per inch. Spray foam is practically twice as good as an insulator as Havelock wool. If you are going to be building a cold weather bus and you're gonna be deleting all those windows, creating large cavities for insulation, and you're gonna insulate the floor, you probably wanna pick spray foam. Spray foam is just better insulator, at least on paper, for cold weather when you compare it to Havelock wool. Now, I'm not a scientist and I'm telling you this next part based on reading articles on the internet. This is my opinion that is based on the opinions of others that I've read. That being said, here's what I know about spray foam. Spray foam is basically two chemicals that are very toxic and gross when they are separate. And when you combine them together with the right pressure and, and at the right temperature, you get a chemical reaction that off gases for 24 to 48 hours and is dangerous in that off gassing period. It's especially dangerous as you're installing it, which means you need to really protect yourself and not breathe in any of those vapors. Supposedly, once the spray foam has formed itself, those two chemicals have combined appropriately and the initial off gassing has occurred. According to the EPA, it's safe. But they also recommend that more research is done on the product because we don't really know. That being said, it has been used in the trailer, Airstream, camper world for 30 to 40 years and has not anecdotally caused massive problems for people. But if you are a person who is chemically sensitive, if you are a person for whom it would make you anxious to think about poorly mixing or off gassing of toxic chemicals, then I don't think you should get spray foam. Now, the other thing is that if spray foam is not applied perfectly, if the mixture is not perfect, if the pressure is not perfect, if it reaches too hot of a temperature as it's being installed, it can not cure correctly. And if it doesn't cure correctly, Correctly, it'll smell fishy, it'll be toxic, and it'll cost you a lot of money. For that reason, I'm not a proponent of doing your own spray foam with any kits that you can buy online. I think you should go hire a licensed, qualified contractor with references to do this job for you. What that means is that you're gonna pay a lot for it. When I did my bus, I paid $1,800 for a 40-foot bus, and then I spent five days trimming it myself. But when you buy the kits, you are actually paying close to that $1,800 when you finally get a enough foam to fill a whole bus, at least if you're doing a 40 foot bus. And you're gonna have to do the install yourself, which means you gotta get all the gear on and you have to diligently spray your whole bus. Probably gonna take several sessions. So another option is this Havelock wool insulation. The really cool thing about this is you can install it yourself. You can also buy enough to do a bus this size for $1,000. It's not cheap, but it's cheaper than spray foam, $1,000 plus shipping. Like spray foam, it is a sound deadener. Like spray foam, it helps you mitigate moisture. Unlike spray foam, it supposedly filters and removes toxic things from the air, whereas spray foam possibly adds toxic things to the air, maybe in minute amounts, nobody knows. Havelock wool, on the other hand, it's definitely not toxic. The install is very easy to do. It's a pretty good package, and I'm excited about having been able to do it in this bus. There's one more thing I wanna tell you about. If you're in a hot climate, you're fighting a losing battle with the windows, and your roof is metal. If you have a ton of thermal mass in your ceiling, that metal ceiling and sun is conducting heat into the spray foam. Having that great thick insulator in your ceiling, if you're in a hot climate all the time, is not at all an advantage in my opinion. This Havelock wool with these two Max Air fans, I think is going to perform much better in hot climates than Gilligan Phantom does with its lack of ventilation and its spray foam insulation. For more information about this product, pricing, etc., check out the link in the description below. It is our affiliate link, and if you end up buying from it, you will be massively supporting our channel, and we really appreciate your help.
do something on the bus. No, that's not how you say it. Let's do something on the bus. Is that it? No, I don't think so. Oh, no, is that <laughs> you don't even say it. Say it. <laughs> Let's do something on the bus. Just do something. Let's do something on the bus. <laughs> that was perfect. So now here we are in the future with most of the wiring done and certainly all of the wiring that goes in the ceiling done. And so we were now able to add an extra inch in between these furring strips. So we've got three inches of Havelock wool in the ceiling and we've got four inches in the walls. Guys, if you made it this far into the video, smash that like button so that we can get this video out to other people who are interested in these topics. Hit that subscribe button because somehow 96% of our views come from those who are not subscribed to our channel. That's insane, it's free. Hit the notifications if you want to see when videos come out. We will see you next time. Peace.